Joining us to talk about it, my pal, General Keith Kellogg, former National Security Advisor during the Trump administration. Um, Keith, what do you make of this? I see confusion. I see diplomacy going nowheres. I see flip-flopping. Now, all of a sudden, it sounds like the, the we're going to war. I mean, hell, I'm still recovering from Afghanistan like the rest of the world is. Now we're going to go to war in the Ukraine. You tell me, what is going on here? Yeah, thanks, Larry. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're, no, you hit, it, you hit the nail right on the head. I don't think they know what's going on. I don't think they're prepared for this. I think they're, they're reacting minute to minute, day to day week to week. I, I just don't think they have a plan going forward. And when they say they're on a war footing, that I tell you, they better watch the language they're using. That is a very, very concerning use of language. When you go on a war footing, that means you're getting ready for general quarters, going to go into a fight. Ukraine's not part of NATO. You know, the, the Article 5 of the NATO treaty does not apply to Ukraine. Uh, and, and we're not supplying them with a lot of equipment. We're not helping them get ready for a big fight. The Brits are. The Brits are sending C-17s with anti-tank weapons in right now as we speak. And here's what's bothersome to me. For the Brits to do that, they're flying them in from Bryce Norton Air Base, and then they have to go around German airspace because the Germans, another NATO member, will not allow those C-17s to fly through their airspace into Ukraine. That should bother some people. But for Jen Psaki to say that, uh, that, that's very concerning because I don't think this team that they've got is ready to go into a war or going to war footing as well. I don't think she understands what she said. I mean, I think that's going to be part of this. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. on this German yeah. point, OK, this new government and I think, frankly, the last years of Angela Merkel, you know, you came with we were all together mm -hmm. with these G7s and whatnot. Right. They're practicing the old Willy Brandt Ost politic. The Germans are leaning right. east. And we're trying to open the door so the Ukrainians can lean west. And that is part of the confusion. Right. And I don't think the Biden administration has made one iota of leadership on that issue. Yeah, Larry, I think you're absolutely right. And it's really quite bothersome to me. You know, at least Donald Trump was pretty forward on this. And by the way, the other thing he did, which I thought was really, really well done, you know, he would pick up the phone and he would call Putin or he'd call any adversary and talk to him. And he kind of warn him off or say, this is where you're going. You know, you, you know, you remember when we were in the White House and we were both assistants to the president. You know, he picked up the phone and called Putin 18 different times. He'd mm -hmm. warn him off on something. This is what we're going to do. He'd always kind of keep him informed, but he'd also send a cautionary note. This president hasn't done that. You know, look who he's sending to do all of this work for him. He's sending the Secretary of State, Tony Blinken. Mm -hmm. He's not getting involved. He's got sort of hands free. And I think it's a huge mistake. The guy who should be involved, if you're getting ready to go to war, is the guy that's empowered under, under Article 2, Section 2 of the Constitution the commander in chief. Mm. That is Joe Biden. Mm. He's the one who should be personally involved and he's not. You know, look at today, the Russian stock market collapsed. OK, today it was off six and a half percent one day. In the last four days, it's off 13 percent. Now, what's interesting about this, Keith, is that the Russia's leading lender is off eight and a half percent today. Now, my point is a mm. simple one. We should have put financial banking sanctions right. right away. I mean, Nord Stream 2, right. yes, of course, we never should have given that up. But you can take Russia and all their banks and take them out of the world dollar system, and they are finished. Liquidity will dry up immediately, and the Russian economy will sink to the ground, and Putin will be a very right. unpopular fellow because of his adventurism and his misreading of, you know, uh, this romantic misreading he has of Russian history and its influence. If we had done that a month or two ago, things might have been better, but they don't. I guess your point is they don't. He's the Biden's not doing it. I don't know who's doing it. They're all traveling around, Keith. They're spending a lot of time in airplanes, going to Geneva. Yeah. I hope they stay in the yeah. finest hotels. Nothing seems to be happening on our side, on our part. Yeah. I'll give you the last word. Yeah I, yeah, I think you're right, Larry. And, and the fact is, here's what concerns me is, as we were told in the White House, we had some pretty good advisors when it came to Russia. And they said, that's one thing about Putin. He really doesn't understand the West. And you hit it right. We could apply a lot of pressure on him. We should have been doing it not last week or last month. We should have been doing that the last 10 months, mm -hmm. and it was not done. And we had opportunities to really pressure them. We just didn't do it. I'm telling you, money talks. We can read them out yeah. of the dollar-based financial system. 
should have done. Anyway, Keith Kellogg, more to be revealed. Hope you yeah. come uh, come back and help us yeah. out, parse through all this. Coming up next on Kudlow.